So we're going to have to take a few paces backwards in order to take a leap forwards. So we're going to have to work on the workshop now. I need to get the workshop up and running in order to get the other projects finished because we haven't got a space to do anything. So now that we've got the office to the stage that we've got it at, I was able to move a lot of the furniture and storage things that we had in the storage into the office. I was able to move the bits from the utility room into the office or into storage and then I was able to move the chairs and things that we had in the workshop into storage. So now I've got the bits, you know, where they are, we've got a lot more space here, which means I can actually get a workbench together um, and get things working. So I thought it's probably better to spend my time getting this done than, you know, trying to build a set of stairs outside in the rain or all those kind of different projects I've got that really need a workbench and all my tools up and running. So. We're gonna, we're gonna work on doing that in this video. There's a bit of walls we've got to put up and close off all the front. We've got two, um, got wiring, so we've got some lights, some cool high bay lights that we're gonna hang from the top. We've got to wire in all the sockets on the walls. Uh, we're gonna build ourselves a massive workbench. I'm really looking forward to that because we've reclaimed some really big pieces of timber when we pulled down the side of this barn. Um, so I'm gonna glue them all together, we're gonna route down the top so that we've got a nice smooth surface. So I'm quite excited for that because I get the feeling that they're going to be a bit of an ugly duckling to swan um, situation because they're pretty really rough bits of timber right now. But I, I think they're really good because they're old growth timber. So they're going, to be, they're, they're going to be quite nice. So I'm really excited about having this space um, working properly and, and the lighting better than it is right now. So <clears throat> we'll start with a bit of clearing up a bit of the wall. There'll be a lot of time lapses in this because there'll be a few bits that will just be me grinding on with the work. It's going to be a bit of a just keep pushing on with it. So uh, let's get started.
you've seen me working on the high bay lights here. We've got two, two going in the top, um, but we have a bit of a problem with drips in the winter when it's a, well, it's been a cold night and then it ends up being a sunny day. The air condenses on the bottom of the corrugated metal roof sheets and then it drips and it drips quite a lot. Um, it's the summer now, so I can't show you, but if you've seen our previous videos, um, it's enough to make me worry about electric. So the lights I've done in that section over there, they're, they're all my new construction, so it's not going to drip there because there's no metal work. All the sockets around the edge are recessed back into the wall, so I'm not really worried too much about drips there. The main drips are in the middle of this area, and they sort of run down the timbers, and then they drip off the uh, cross beams. So I've located the lights not in the areas where it's likely to drip. However, it's something I need to keep in mind. So a solution I've come up with, this is one of the high bay lights, kind of cool looking thing. Um, that is already IP65, which I think means it's water resistant, so I'm not gonna submerge it, but it's, um, it's good enough, and it comes with a cable which is already um, fitted in, so that's okay. But it's the connection between the main cable and this that I'm a bit worried about, because you know water can run into this connection and then short everything out, so that's not really gonna be a great idea. So what I've got is these really cool little waterproof connectors. And they've got little waggos, waggos, wagos. Um, if you haven't used these, these are, these are cool bit of kit. You just clip them on the end like that. I'll try and do this one. Hang on, let me put you down. I've been using them for most of the other bits that we've been working on because they're just so quick. Don't use them for all connectors, but you just pop them in push it in like that and then you clip clip that down and then that's connected so it comes with three of these which you just connect all of the now they're only two-way way goes so um, you're not going to be doing any two-way switching on this but you could I'm assuming get three-way version I haven't seen it the ones I've got are two-way so you've got that like that and then this little closing box here has got this kind of sticky, really sticky gel in it that at the minute is nice and smooth and flat. But when you press, I'm gonna try and do this one handed, but you sort of press the, oh, it's really gooey. Press these in like that. Are they all in? One, two, three. And then you seal it like that it sort of squeezes all that gel in and around the connectors, making it waterproof, or at least water, it says waterproof on it. It says um, IPX8, but this is in Spanish, so I'm not really sure. It says waterproof on the front, but I'm not sure I'd trust it actually submerged. Um, but for the drips we've got here, I think it's gonna be a pretty good solution.
So this is the timber I'm trying to save for the workbenches. It's big, it's old. It's also rotten in places. So I'll have to see how this actually comes out. I might regret it, but then again, I might come down to the end and get something really nice. So we're gonna keep going for now and see if we can't make something um, worth keeping. But one of the things, I'm, I'm gonna be passing this through a plane to flatten off the timber and make it look a bit nicer, but you don't wanna be going um, through that with any nails in it. So I was trying to figure out how to detect the the nails or any metal in the timber. And if you get any dedicated devices for this, they're really expensive. So I had a look on the internet and I found this, which is a pinpoint metal detector, which, you know, if people are digging holes and they're looking for coins or something, they use this to really pinpoint where the coin or whatever it actually is. So it's supposed to be a bit more sensitive. It was like 10 or 15 quid on Amazon. And I was like, is this really gonna work? But it does. There's, um, it's got kind of a distance and this here, this nail is five millimeters below the surface and that detects it fine there. See the staples on the side? So if it gets really close, it also vibrates. I must mean it's found it. Um, but yeah, if it's any deeper than that, you're not gonna hit it with the plane anyway. So I'm just gonna go back over this after a couple of passes and just check, but yeah, it's, um, it's actually pretty good. So it does work for this purpose. I don't know if you need the dedicated woodworking ones because I think they were like 150 quid for a dedicated woodworking one. And this was 15 quid. It's a rip off of a much more expensive one because it's the same color. I don't know the brand of the really expensive one, but this, you know. So if you were looking for one, this is the cheap one. It's the rip off and it does work. So there's that. Um, one thing I'd mention is you've got your wedding ring. So sometimes I, I've, I've been sort of using the hand like that and it, it gives false, um, false signals. So just make sure you use it with the hand without your wedding ring or take your wedding ring off. So we'll have to see what these timbers come out like. So was it worth it? It's a whole day, four pieces of wood, and I fried my thicknesser. So maybe the very nice pieces after they've come down. Um, Shelter Institute says that it can take up to 40 years for a piece of wood to fully dry out so it's no longer green. And this will be a lot closer to that than anything you'd be able to get from a timber yard. So maybe, maybe we've got four pieces of wood, whole day, but they're very nice. So and they're reclaimed. So, you know, this, this workbench is gonna have a special place in my heart, especially as I've just ruined one of my most expensive tools doing it.
got endless pots of glue that all dry on the top. So you, you use them with a bit, bit of glue and they all dry. This one's probably okay, this one's dried up and it's just a right pain. So what I've done is I've bought a big one, which is cheaper because you buy it in bulk. And then you've got mayonnaise, or in this case ketchup container from the recycling bin. I just went bin diving um, and just put some of that in there. And to be honest, the squeezy bit on the end of that is far better than the squeezy bits on the end of here and they're designed for glue. I suppose because it's got that little plastic silicon, um, you know, the bit inside there is flexible. So you can get a lot more control with your glue. I only fill this about a third of the way up because I think some of the problems you can face with this is that the glue dries inside the nozzle and then you end up having to dig it out. And especially this Gorilla Glue one, it's supposed to be better, but I, I actually find it sucks. So just get a big one like that. It's more cost effective and then you get to recycle and yeah, that, that was really good. Um, I, as I said, haven't filled it all the way up because it's likely to dry on you anyway. So just put what you need in this and then perhaps um, you won't have that issue in the future. But I'm gonna store this and see what happens. Here we go. We've got the lights on. We've got the workbench over there done. We've got the workbench in the middle done. I also built a table saw table just here, which is the whole point of this. It's supposed to be an outfeed table um, for the table saw as well as a, its own independent workbench. Um, pretty pleased with it overall. It's not gonna be this shiny when it's finished because it's, it's wet at the moment. But um, you know, maybe a, or two days work. So maybe one day to prepare the timber 
and then it was maybe another day to, to actually construct it. Um, in hindsight, I'd probably say if you're going to go to that length, buy decent timber in the first place, but I feel good for reusing it. Um, it's a bit... It's good enough, isn't it? I'm not going super pretty here anyway, otherwise we would have done fancy joining and all that, I just screwed it together. So it's good enough. Um, it's just nice to have something to work that's out of the out of the wet outside. So I was gonna start tidying up all the tools because it's still a bit of a mess, although we've got more of a functional space, it's a mess. So I've started designing some 3D printed brackets, but uh, I suspect this video is getting a little long. So I'm gonna leave that for the second video. And then once we've done that, uh, we can finally get on with the whole point of getting this workshop done, which is the staircase for the office so that we can get all of our books in there. So if you'd like to see that, come join us. It's been nice to have you here. We'll see you then.